Hello and welcome. If you are watching and listening to this, you have found an online worship service put together by Rincon Congregational United Church of Christ. And we're based out of Tucson, Arizona. And the service is put together for August 9th, 2020. But whenever you're watching this, wherever you are, welcome. And wherever you are on life's journey, welcome. Whether you are hurting, hopeful, afraid, pushing into new chapters in your life, welcome. Whether you're doing okay, welcome. And if you're not doing okay, especially welcome. It's okay to not be okay. We are living through a seismic time with a lot of fear and death and feelings of loss of control all around us. We're gonna get into that a good bit in today's service with our themes and so on. But whenever, wherever, and whoever you are, welcome. Whether LGBTQIA, all abilities, all body types, man, woman, bit of both, black, brown, white, or a bit of each, older, younger, bit of both. Welcome. My name is Seth Whispleway. I use he and him pronouns, and I am the interim pastor here at Rincon. And this is an especially special weekend for me, and I hope many of you. Uh, it was one year ago uh, that I began as the interim pastor for and with Rincon. Now, for those who are new to the United Church of Christ or new to Ring Khan or just forget what the heck I'm doing here, what that means is Ring Khan is in an, in an in-between time, a liminal space, and exciting new chapters are afoot where the members and friends who call this place their church home, their body of faith, their connecting point, their safe space, and we strive to make this safe space. These people, y'all, who I love dearly, are answering questions like, who are we now? Who is God calling us to become? And who is our neighbor in this season, uh, growing forward after years here in Tucson? So one year in, so much has happened. A year ago, on my very first Sunday, we were in a packed sanctuary and i was preaching about where i was coming from that was august 11th last year and i spoke to my work and the story i'm still a part of in charlottesville confronting and fighting back against white supremacy in the name of the god who is love that's a story that continues so if you feel called and remember to light a candle with me this week on august 11th and 12th and recommit yourselves to the fight to dismantle and overcome white supremacy, which is obviously still with us this summer and will always be with us. I thank you and welcome you. Um, and now we are doing this online thing and it's new and it's different and we're figuring out how to locate ourselves when it feels so disconnecting, how to stay connected to one another. So, I'm talking long enough, but this is a welcome for you who want to feel a bit of connection, hope, sustenance, prayer, encouragement, challenge, all of the above. Welcome. You are welcome here. And would you please stand in spirit and or body as you're able for our call to worship. God of presence, as you walked upon the water to meet the disciples, Meet us in the midst of the storms in our lives. God of renewal, as you lifted Peter from the water, lift us from despair to hope, from distraction to focus, from death to life. God of the journey, direct us in your way. Work out your purpose in and through our lives. We pray in the name of Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Come. Worship the Holy One who meets you where you are. Come, open yourselves to the God who lifts us up.
You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my cross, my sin, my shame, raising again, I praise your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I run dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, holy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, holy is your name. confession, where we acknowledge the ways in which we are alienated from God and from each other and find renewed purpose to bind ourselves in the holy work of making things new and loving for all. Read along with the words as they appear on your screen. For ignoring the vision breathed by the living spirit, churning deep within our souls. God have mercy, God have mercy, have mercy upon us. For refusing to look at the vision, alive within those who look or act or sound different from us. God have mercy, God have mercy. Have mercy upon us. For choosing familiarity, ease and comfort, rather than risking the opportunities afforded in the vision. 
God have mercy, God have mercy, have mercy upon us. If your heart is heavy with fear, with worry, with sorrow, come to this place and find strength. As you long for community and a world that is torn apart, come to this place and find love. Come, people of God, and in this place, in this moment, find peace, hope, strength, and love as we worship and pray together. You are beloved. Amen. Uh, our scripture for today is Matthew 14, verses 22 through 33. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. 
So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Well, hey there. Another week and another very well-known text of Jesus doing something seemingly miraculous and the disciples all a flutter and confused and scared about what's possible and what it means and who is lighting things up around them until they get it all over again at the end of the story. And like last week with the feeding of the 15 to 20,000, which this story immediately follows, there is context here in the gospel, in what the gospel writer of Matthew is conveying that most all of us probably missed in Sunday school, if we did Sunday school at all. Indeed, the direct callbacks in this story today to moments and verses throughout Hebrew scripture could fill weeks of sermons and would also have been extra familiar to listeners and readers in Matthew's target audience in the late 80s CE, or AD. We've got Psalms reference, we've got Job, we've got Isaiah, and on. In the time we have today, I want to draw our attention to two big connections in the story of Jesus walking on water, to the story of God communicating and walking alongside us in history and our sacred texts. Specifically, let's look at Genesis and Exodus. Now, as with last week, biblical scholars are quick to point out how Matthew is positioning who Jesus is in ways that contest the claims of imperial propaganda that emperors like Domitian, who was emperor when Matthew was being written, the imperial propaganda that these emperors were rulers of lands and seas and nations. Now, to call and recognize Jesus as Lord, who can reign over creation, including chaotic waters and seas, is as subversive as sharing food among many when those goods were said to come only through the emperor, as we discussed last week. Matthew is going back to in the beginning when God brought forth and formed heavens and earth here. In the beginning was a formless and void deep, a chaos, a turmoil, and God's breath, the ruach, hovered over it and stilled it. God calms storms. Jesus calms storms. Moreover, in this story, Jesus is like that deliverer Moses going up to the mountain, as with Sinai, to bring back the new covenantal order, along with, in this whole track of stories, being in the wilderness, feeding people, and controlling the sea now. Jesus here recalls the exodus deliverance from a tyrant back then, as scholars point out. Jesus reenacts God's saving power in comparable situations of political control. This would have been very familiar to early readers and hearers of this gospel, for whom the story of Moses and Exodus was uniquely powerful and forming. This was powerfully resonant and meaningful. Living under fear, repression, tyranny and violent empire in the late 80s. They got it. And when we recognize those of you marginalized and rightly fearful now of those same elements, and those of you able to take the scales of the empire's white hetero comfort and wealth off of our eyes, ears, and body, 
when we recognize we are living in a time such as that, this story comes alive for us in bold, beautiful new ways, I think, yeah? Matthew's whole deal is asserting Jesus' lordship apart from the violence and repression of empire, which declared its own lordship over everything and all of its subjects. Same as we pointed out last week, no one gets crucified or persecuted for hanging out on a lake and breaking bread. It's the realization and claim that the living God is among us and is the actual one who can calm storms and represents true power to transform this world and bring balance to creation that threatens that which seeks to repress and sow chaos and perpetuate injustice. These are the things, these are the claims about the way Jesus is walking and how he's doing it apart from the empire's systems of control and domination that the emperor will deem seditious. This is why people get persecuted and crucified. So see and hear this story with new eyes if this context and scholarship is new for you. And for me, it's exciting to place this in context because rather than how that relegating it to history, it shows, as the gospel always is there to show us, just how alive it is for us today. This isn't explaining away. It's actually bringing forth new life for understanding this very popular and well-known story. The gospel is not a buffet to pick from, but a banquet to fully partake and walk in all around us. I love this. So, what are, we, what are we being asked to let go of this week? What are we asked to let be? And what do we hope to let come when we sit with this story of walking on water and fitful, faithful efforts to join Jesus there? Well, this week, beloved, let go. This is a constant theme. Let go of fear, which is where most of the disciples are during this storm, when they see Jesus coming. But also let go of the idea that getting it right, meaning being a Christian, combating white supremacy, whatever it is, those two things are synonymous. Let go of the idea that getting it right is something you can manufacture on your own. Let go of individualism that disconnects from the work of God in the world. Let go of the need for the perfect moment to get involved, to step out. Individualism and perfection are postures that are also rooted in supremacist ideologies. Supremacist ideologies like whiteness and patriarchy. Let go of these bootstrap myths. Let go of the idolization of purity or any shame you feel when you don't attain it. We never can anyway. We don't need that as individuals or communities. We need to sort things out together and love ourselves for the beautiful contradictory messes we are. Because stepping out in faith, knowing that means we'll actually then get in the beautiful mess of getting sincerely better and becoming more the people in communities of faith we want to be and therefore closer to God's walk and Jesus' saving power that's already always going on around us. Let go of fear and the need for perfection and purity and doing things on your own. We got this together. We belong to each other. Let go of the fear of not being perfect or being woke enough, or of being individualistic in your endeavors. We are church to do these things together. We let go of these things that keep us from liberating work that happens together. Let be, what are we letting be this week? Well, we're letting be the grip. Jesus is reaching out 
Jesus has got this. Jesus doesn't need us to save, okay? As pastor and writer Angela Denker says, reading this Bible text, this story we read today, reading it anew in 2020, she says, I found myself remembering the popular adage, if you want, on, if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. And I imagine preaching it to an American people weary at the hands of a pandemic, raging uncontrollably, a people unable to see the value of shared sacrifice and solidarity, a people galvanized by the call to racial justice after the murder of George Floyd and too many others by the police, and a people, most of them white Christians, divided over what that call to racial justice says about the complicity of a white American church that once endorsed slavery. She goes on, we are not a people equipped to earn our own salvation. We are not a people called to get out of the boat on our own. We are wandering in the wilderness. The self-help gospel of the popular American Christianity of the last few decades has little to say to us now as married couples take their last shaky breaths next to each other on ventilators in overcrowded ICU units, as teachers purchase scrubs and personal protective equipment to walk into their classrooms, as people of color continue to suffer disproportionately, not only at the hands of the police, but also from the global pandemic. Let's be. Let be by going back to the Bible story. Jesus walks on water. Peter asks Jesus to call him in. Jesus does. Peter walks on water. Peter gets scared. Jesus reaches out his hand and saves Peter. Jesus chides Peter for his lack of faith. They return safely to the boat. The wind stops. Everyone worships Jesus. Let be Jesus. Let Jesus be Jesus. This is our focus, always. But this very well-known story asks us to see with new eyes, especially now. Denker continues, suddenly we see God for who God is. God is inviting. God is forgiving. God saves us. When Peter began to sink, Jesus didn't laugh at him. Jesus didn't say, come on, Peter, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Why don't you work harder? Instead, Jesus extends his hand when Peter is in need. Jesus saves Peter not because Peter is the ideal American man, a promise keeper, or an elder, or the middle class success story, but Jesus saves Peter because saving is what Jesus does. Let it be. Now, what do we hope to let come? I think, I hope, let come Jesus' calming presence in your life. Not controlling, but when we reach out our hands, we have that much more control over our fear. We are filled with and then guided by love. What a wonderful control panel. It's not manipulative. It's an infusion of fuel for moving us with God and as God moves when we let come Jesus' calming presence in our lives, especially in the scary moments. We are not alone. You are not alone. Discipleship is challenging. We experience storms of fear and threats when we walk in the way of trying to confront the chaos of this world. That's guaranteed to us. And honestly, if we're not experiencing those things, we're probably not risking the gospel that Jesus walks. But Jesus is with you. Jesus has got you. Let it come, and you will work and walk wonders. Let come the calm and hand that will help bring control to chaos within you and against the chaos-inducing injustices the empire would like to keep perpetuating. Let it come this week, beloved. Say, here I am. Say, here I am. And listen for, take heart. 
it is I. Do not be afraid. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. It may come as a still small voice inside. It may come from a member or friend at church. It may come from a most unlikely source. Listen, the waters will calm within, even as we navigate the chaos about. This is true and lasting discipleship. This is Jesus being Jesus, and this is Jesus within you. Unafraid, arm in arm, come what may. Amen. As members of fr and friends of Rincon, we have committed to be God's heart and hands in action. So I want us this morning just to take a moment with our bowed heads to each name in our hearts what we will share of ourselves and whatever gifts we have in the coming week to demonstrate how we are God's heart and hands in action.
Loving God, we believe that you have saved us. You are saving us and you will save us. We offer to you our whole lives as a living sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Use us, multiply us and the gifts we offer in person, by mail or online to extend the invitation of life and community to everyone we meet. Thank you again, beloved, for taking this time to hopefully rest and hopefully recharge from all the chaos that is splashing around you and in our world. What's crazy is that we're invited to calm it, to reach out, not to wait for the perfect moment, but to actually recognize that the calming of the storm begins with the calming within us so that we can bring calm to the storms of others. And recognizing too that we don't calm without others. We need each other. And I get that it's hard to be connected now. So my prayer for you is that this was a place of connection and a chance to think and act and receive anew the connection you have even during this very difficult time. Wherever you are joining us from, as I mentioned at the top of the service, we are based out of Tucson, Arizona. So this recording, same as our in-person church services when we've had them, took place on the occupied lands of the Tohono O'odham Nation and its people who have stewarded them for generations. We acknowledge this weekly knowing that we are called to at a bare minimum because it places us rightly in history and story and purposes and the way God moves through history so that we can understand God's purposes even now in prayerful hope that we experience a prayerful repentance, reparation, re-understanding and use of these lands and the places we call church home and more. And now, beloved, go forth. Remembering you have been raised with Christ, do the work of Christ in the world. Extend a hand to those in need. Speak up for those others would cast aside. Build bridges with reparations. Strengthen bonds of community and extend the invitation of life, community, and purpose to others, knowing that the God who created you the Christ who redeems you and the spirit who empowers you will be with you this day and evermore. Amen.
what's possible and what it means and who is lighting things up around them until the process is through. What do I mean by that? I don't know.